Welcome to the Prog Talks by the Prog Space. Welcome to the Prog Talks, an interview series by the Prog Space, where we will be talking to musicians in all corners of the progressive music scene. Welcome back to the Prog Talks, once again with Uncle Prog, and this time I'm really excited because I have one of the legends of Norwegian prog metal with me, none other than... Eivind Hagelan, known from Manitou, Spiral Architect, Lunaris, Scariot, and of course now Terra Odium. How are you doing, Eivind? Oh, I'm doing great. Thank you. Yeah, and and you just released, I think it's coming up on 10 days or something, this album, Ni Plus Ultra, which, has, uh, which is the first album from Terra Odium. So have you guys been hearing anything back from fans, reviewers? Are you happy with the feedback you are getting now? Uh, the feedback has been uh, very, uh, it's been, been huge feedback. Uh, yeah. and we never expected this kind of feedback. Uh, or we, um, we never sat down and discussed how the feedback would be. No. Uh, because we were working hard on the album and, and now... Uh, everything is coming in like uh, really good reviews and positive feedback and, and that's uh it's uh overwhelming yeah i can imagine and, and and probably after having worked on the album for a long time you know the music has existed with you and now finally people can hear it so it has to be exciting to mm-hmm. finally bring that out to people it is it is it is it is strange because we try uh, we have tried to keep kept it a secret too yeah. so because uh, if you re- uh, release a demo everybody loves the demo <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so we tried to to keep that a, a secret uh, some got hold of hold of it but mm. uh, so now when when we finally get the feedback on the music it's uh, it's uh, it's amazing yeah uh, and it's 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 uh, it's exciting to uh, when to, to when the people are are hearing our music for the first time, uh, uh, I love uh, I love love the feeling. Uh, I, yeah, I can imagine. You know, I, I, I'm I'm such a big fan of a lot of your work and 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 a lot of the other musicians in the band because it's like a a, a really amazing lineup. So I just want to dive into the the history of it uh, immediately. You know, how did the band start out? Can you tell me a little bit about the history of Terra Odium? Of course, you're all musicians with a long history having played in, in, in so many different bands how did terra Odium mm. come together uh, I, I lived in um, i used to live in stockholm for a few years five years so when i moved back to norway um i was thinking of i wanted to do some music again so uh, i contacted bully uh, the guitar player in terra Odium, and he had a bunch of songs uh, but they were uh, they were more uh, in death the death metal genre. Oh, I see. He was into death metal, so I think uh, crawling. No, not crawling. I can maybe uh, it's uh, the shadow long. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that that was one of few riffs he had uh, of the riffs he had with, with death metal vocals on it ah. and everything so i said I, I like that riff can we can we slow down the drums can we uh can we do it more uh manitou style um, yeah 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 so so he uh we did a demo and we did shadow lung uh it was the first uh song we did uh, and we reunited manitou for a sh- few uh uh, Shows, concerts yeah. yeah yeah so uh after a few few uh shows we we put it back on ice uh manager we we uh disbanded again and um, we we discussed it uh bully and i we, we um we really worked well together mm. we, we had a very creative uh environment when we worked uh so um so we agreed on uh, just go further, take yeah. take everything uh, to to uh, form a band, band really, and uh, 
So the first people I thought of was, uh, well, we thought of the sound. We wanted to, to sound different than everybody else. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we wanted drums. Uh, we wanted Oscar's drums because he, he his approach on music is different than everybody else I know, anybody yeah. else I know, uh, because he thinks I can hear a riff like this and he hears a riff like this. Yeah. <laughs> so so it's, it's, it's so different. So when he, uh, his approach to the drums is, uh, is what we wanted in our music. And, and I thought of, I always loved the uh, fretless bass. Yes. Uh, and, and, I, and I'm into jazz and fusion music. So, so I really wanted that kind of sound into this kind of heavy guitar driven uh, music. So, uh, so I contacted Steve, uh, the Giorgio and, um, Lucky for us, he was uh, into the idea, and I wanted to join the band. So, uh, and I put out, and I and I um, I always been a fan of Roger Waters, uh, amused to death, and uh, Queen's like the warning um, mm. with that kind of cinematic. It's almost like it's a movie. It's, yeah. it's a, almost like it's a film score, and we I wanted that. We wanted that uh, in our music, so I put out a, put out an uh, an ad on uh, my uh, Facebook page and asked if somebody knew uh, a composer or yeah. uh, anybody who could uh, do uh, this, this that kind of stuff. Of, yeah. And um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so we um, so dark um, uh, off. Sorry, I forgot his name right now, but he's from Iraq or Iran, uh, who, who said, uh, John Phipps, you got to try John Phipps. And uh, I contacted John John Phipps and and he said, yeah, sure, uh, I'll do that. Uh, it's um, These are the prices and everything. And, uh, and I said, I'm sorry, we don't have a budget. <laughs> we, we There is no budget. So no. Uh, he came back and he said, uh, said um, well, I uh, I didn't know it was the guys from Spall Architect. I didn't know it was uh, Steve DiGiorgio from Death. And it, it turned out he, he knew about our music. So. Exactly. So uh, that was just a match made in, uh, in heaven. <laughs> so uh, so we agreed to, to uh, that he joined the band. Now, so that yes. was uh, fantastic. Yeah, I have to say he adds a lot of, you know, atmospherics, like you say, cinematics to to the music of, of, and that might be, you know, of course, for someone who's like, listen to the old Manitou album entrance uh, a million mm. times, same with the Spiral Architect album, of course, that is maybe mm. what is sort of the, the difference or the big difference in Terra Odium is these cinematic elements that is mm. brought in by, by John Phipps. Yeah, because we, we didn't want we didn't want uh, the um, the typical not the typical but but we, we didn't see. want yeah. a key, keyboard player in our band. Yeah, like uh, uh, I don't say this as a negative thing, but most there is almost no uh, progressive metal bands without a keyboard player. You're right. Yeah, these days. So it, and it's keyboard solos and everything, and we, for for us we didn't want that. We mm. we wanted more old uh, old school, in nineteen eighty six, nineteen eighty seven progressive metal like Old Face Warning or um, yes, or or even the old King Diamond albums, yeah, uh, Psychotic Waltz, and everything, early, yeah, yeah, Psychotic Waltz uh, and everything, uh, Porch Tower, yeah. So we wanted to do something different and not have a, a, a keyboard player, but. So he, um, well, he, he, um, the way he does it is he, he is a composer. Yes. Yeah. He, he is educated a composer. I think he has to master in every musical thing uh, <laughs> there is. So as I, um, as I understand it, he, he puts in one and one, one instrument at the time. Yeah. One violin, so another violin, and everything, and puts them in the sound uh, um, where they should be, and um, hmm. uh, in the mix, yeah. in the in the scope of things. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And, 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 yes. Um, 
so uh, I think there is uh, up to a hundred or even more instruments at one wow. time. Yeah, it is from a real orchestra. So and 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 it is composed as a real music score. So so it's it's not just sampled bits or anything exactly, like that. It yeah. is it's made really made for this, and uh, and we worked a long time on it. But he had he had the ideas right away. Uh, really fantastic ideas, and uh, and also I love uh, the way he um, he 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 composes things on the riffs. Maybe Bully and I didn't see uh, uh, that he would do it on those riffs. Exactly. And I also like that he he lets the music breathe. That's way uh, so much stuff he doesn't play on mm. and and i think that is maybe the biggest difference between having a keyboard player and having an orchestrator yeah i i agree because you know like you said there's not this typical prog metal keyboards on this album but there is a an orchestral and a, or a keyboard element and you know i'm, I'm guessing mm -hmm. as you keep speaking about this i'm guessing having someone with this uh you know technical background in music also helps a lot with with creating an album like this mm. uh absolutely it's um it's a new angle for us uh to work with uh, to work that kind of way, uh, yeah, and and with uh, and with people that has, um, well, this yeah, like background. such a yeah. such a deep, mm -hmm. yeah, understanding yeah. of of yeah, yeah, well, uh, absolutely. I want to I want to jump back to a little thing you said just because it it interested me. You know, you said about you uh, moving back to Norway and then and then uh, meeting up again with Bolly and he had some stuff mm -hmm. and you guys reunited Manitou for a while. Were there any mm -hmm. thoughts at all of using any of this material for let's say a second Manitou album? Did you ever discuss that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh Shadow Long was originally made for a new Manitou album, yeah, and uh, we have uh, we started on uh, the the thorn was supposed to be a Manitou uh, song. Uh, we played we played the Shadow Long live two or three times with Manitou. Oh, you so, did, yeah, uh, ab absolutely. It it was was supposed to be a a new Manitou album. Yeah, but you decided against it. That you wanted to go in a different direction with it, or no? Well, uh, Manitou, it just didn't happen. Yeah, with Manitou. So, so uh, the, we disbanded and, and thought these are too 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 good songs. Yeah, to... too good to throw away or <clears throat> to yeah. Absolutely, we need to do something about it, and <clears throat> and it was fun to. It would be fun to have other musicians. Uh, interprets uh, these songs and, yeah. and see how that comes out. It's kind of like not the uh, Manitou part two, but, but uh, uh, these songs uh, interpreted by by, by yes. other people. That would be very exciting. Mm. Yeah. Well, uh, um, you you mentioned the, the songwriting process. You know that the Bolly had a lot of material when you when you sort of hooked up, and that it was. A lot of it was meant for more of a death metal style band or mm. whatever. So, how does the songwriting for for Terra Odium work? You know, uh, does Bolly write most of the stuff? How do you work together? Do you actually have the chance to, you know, jam things out in a in a rehearsal room, or do you send files back and forth? It seems to be so common today to use digital files and just sit in your own home <coughs> studios. How does it work for you mm. guys? Well, we're very, uh, very lucky that Bully has a uh, has a home studio and has worked in years in that studio. Uh, so, so we, uh, he he um, he uh, he comes up with the whole songs. Sometimes I I go in and say uh, this part is too good to just be once. We need yeah, I, I need to sing on that part. Yeah. Uh, well, no, it's a so it's a lead, uh, it's a solo <laughs> part. No, no, I want I want to sing on that. That got to be the the chorus or something like that. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. But but I, but 
but mostly he has the songs fully mapped out. So, yeah, mapped out. So yeah. so I come in and um and we press record and I start improvising vocals. Um so uh on the album uh like uh, it was not death or winter uh that's pretty well a lot a lot of the vocals there are first take hmm. when we started improvising the first time uh and um and other things are <laughs> multiple takes yeah before but you, um yeah. That, that's how we start so we have a so he uh, he he also sits down and and um, even uh, or he either play drums his own drums to it or he he uh, searched uh, he has he search um, through files of uh, yeah a library really, of uh, yeah yeah of really mm. great drummers and he and he uh, used those and so when Oscar get the the, the tapes he. Uh, he can choose. Do you want to do your own thing, or do you want to use our ideas? And so he he makes a mix mix of everything there. Yeah. So so uh, and uh, and uh, that was on, all on files because he recorded the drums in uh, uh, in the woods in the top top room studios. Oh, I see. Yeah. Where, where Mayhem, Bocknagall, and everybody. Yeah, every recorded. the big the big black metal bands mm-hmm. and yeah. Yeah, and uh, and uh, Steve, uh, he came to to Mandal, Lyngdal and Mandal. So, oh really? He, um, yeah, I was envisioning so, uh, you guys having to send the files and everything, but Steve managed to come over and and record. Uh, Steve wanted to, to to be in the room with us ah. when he he did the bass because he wanted our uh, feedback and and, and more more like that jam thing. So um, he. He came in. Uh, well, he's. I think it was seven days. He uh, he had um, he was there, and uh, because he didn't know how, how fast he would learn the songs and everything, of course, yeah. so he didn't he didn't know any of the songs, but he had listened to all of them uh, and, and and liked them. And so he sat down with Bully and uh, a couple. It was it wasn't long. He 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 took he had that down by yeah. Uh, so um, so he recorded mostly two songs a day, learned and recorded two songs oh, a day. Yeah, except maybe Thorn, because it's twelve minutes long, <laughs> and that <laughs> so took a little more time. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But but he he took it in no time, and, and he recorded it, and, and a lot of his a lot of that is his first take because yeah. he, he is a uh, exceptional bass yeah, player. Yeah, it's mind blowingly good. Of course, his mm. his background with uh, Sadus and Death, and you know, just about anybody. Mm. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, so so getting him on the album must have been like a, felt like a, a a big thing for you guys to to have him not only want to play on it, but you know that also stated mm. that he was he enjoyed the music. He was impressed by the music that he wanted to be on yeah. it. Yeah. And he is a band member. He is a full-time exactly. band member. Exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah, that he liked the music. But we, we have, um, yeah, uh, um, well, I think every th- everything was was right uh, because we wanted that, that. It was that kind of sound we wanted, you know, the philosopher, death. Yes. <laughs> That's what we kind of wanted. And, and he really, he delivered and then some uh but yeah yeah having steve di giorgio on an, an album is uh it's um uh, so it's surreal because yeah. uh back in the days with manitou we had an altar with you know with some uh king diamond stuff <laughs> and uh no sort of candles and death and yeah <laughs> and <laughs> And uh, we saw them, uh, saw them um, on MTV, and we had all the albums, and and now we're in the same band. So that that's that's, that's surreal. It yeah, is. yeah. But um, and you, you, I, I'm, I, I find that interesting. You mentioned the philosopher because uh, several times on the album, it's, of course, with that bass, that bass sound, I get sort mm. of flashbacks, especially to that last part of the philosopher with the dueling bass and the, mm. the guitar that fades out. You know, you have that fantastic bass sound, and and he brought that to the album. It's a really, oh. really great sound. Yeah, I said uh, 
we really want that philosopher that that when you you do that slide kind of slides that nobody else does exactly and he said yeah yeah that's what i thought that's what that, that's what i felt on on this music and that's what i wanted to do uh, <clears throat> so that was uh, a good match it I felt think. like it's it all it seems when i'm talking to you, you know like this all clicked together perfectly in a way you know uh, it's The, the, the musicians you wanted to be on, they wanted to be a part of the band. You know, everything seemed to come together very well. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, it's a dream come true, making an album like that. And with, with these kind of people, uh, amazing musicians that not are only amazing musicians, but they have their own sound. As, yeah. And, and that, that's what we wanted. We wanted every musician in our band to... Uh, stand out on their own so uh, i mean uh, acdc I, i love acds by the way but yeah you know too. it it it's the whole band it's the bass that's in the background da, 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 yeah, always the, in yeah. e or a <laughs> but this this is here we wanted the, the the bass to be heard all the time we wanted to be one of the as important as the guitar or, yeah, the, drums or the drums or, or, or the vocals yeah. we wanted to be a Uh, band that yeah, equal, everybody could stand equal, out mm. yeah uh, equal participant in the music sort of well, absolutely it, it, it truly is on the album and the album is stand out because of your approach to this you know your your wish to do something that's truly you and you know not necessarily some more you know formulaic progressive metal which <laughs> is kind of a weird statement because a band being formulaic and a band being progressive is is Hmm. should be two opposite things but i guess progressive metal has become a bit formulaic in that many bands are following the you know the patterns or the template that's put out by some of these old bands uh, yeah well, well there's a new formula for for, for the uh, progressive metal bands and and uh, not all follow that recipe no but of course not but a lot it, it, uh, uh, and uh, there's nothing wrong with that recipe because i love it myself but it's just not what we wanted to no, do we wanted exactly. to do but we're still we're still just copies of the old bands <laughs> but but i think uh, it's the, the, own the more forgotten bands yeah yeah, yeah. No, not forgotten bands that, that's not one of my but but the, well they haven't reached uh the publicity that uh Green Theater and um, no. Opeth and those bands. Has- exactly. And also, I guess, is some of those bands that you're referring to now, which I guess is stuff like, you know, the older Fate's Warning, the Psychotic Walls, the Watchtower, the, the early yeah. Sieges Even stuff. You know, it's not ba- it's not uh, music that you hear inspire a lot of new musicians to write that style no. of music, right? So. Mm. so so that's what we wanted, really wanted also that because the newer Uh, progressive music metal is more it's more of kind of like also the gent music it's yes. the, the guitars are more percuss- percussive they are uh so we wanted the the old rc osborne riffing we wanted the i mean uh, the king diamond riffing the you know the old old school guitar metallica riffing exactly back in the yeah. day. Uh, that, that's what we wanted and just with with my Uh, 80s vocals and um, and uh, our vision of the songs, how we wanted the songs to to. Uh, yeah, it's interesting what you be. say say there because uh, the fact that you are drawing inspirations from a, an older era makes you sound more fresh today than a lot of the <laughs> bands that are around Ooh, wow. because you guys Never are actually did. doing things that aren't used so often so for uh, i think for a lot of uh, you know especially younger prog metal fans this might be the first meeting they have with this this style of progressive yeah. metal yeah maybe with a uh, greta one fleet of uh, progressive metal <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. Well, I think there's maybe a bit more originality in what you do than <laughs> some of Greta Van Fleet, which of course is a, a a great band in its own right. But I know what you mm. mean, you know. Uh, well, I think that's a good segue. You talk about King Diamond and you know your heroes and all that stuff. Of course, uh, mm. uh, I wanted to ask you, and 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 you are you're 
you are one of my favorite vocalists. So I want to ask you about your mm, vocals. Wow. Are you uh, self-taught? Are you? Do you have any education as a vocalist? What were your inspirations when you started uh, doing vocals? Well, first of all, thank you. Um, uh, well, I started out uh, singing Motley Crue songs. Before that, maybe some some Demis Rousseau or or even Elvis. Yeah. Uh, big inspiration or oh, Demis Rousseau, very big inspiration. But Vince Neil is the, is the reason I started singing because yeah. I thought he was the coolest guy. Uh, I loved everything about his style and everything. And I wanted to be on that stage and everything. So uh, that's what it started with. With um, I started out with uh, Motley Crue and Kiss and uh, Hanoi Rocks and uh, Rose Tattoo and yeah, it's what when I heard. I think when I heard uh, I heard Halloween, um, Walls of Jericho album, and I mm. was floored by the vocals and and the songs, the fast songs. Yeah. Really, and uh, I was amazed by that. And then I heard uh, Queensryche, The Warning, uh, for the first time. And I was amazed by his vocals. And then I heard Fate's Warning, Awaken the Guardian. And I, and I remember I was, I think I was 16 or 17. And I went to rehearsal with my band, Harlequin. Uh, we were playing everything from country to uh, to Halloween songs. Yeah. Uh, I said you got to listen to this. It's it's almost it's kind of like uh, Queen's Strike, but 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 it's so wild. It's so uh, <laughs> it's so different. It's so more mysterious. Oh, well, not more mysterious, but so that's that's when I started. And also, uh, Our Maiden, Power Slave course, album. Those uh, the song Power Slave and Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. That was just that stuff. Just uh, intrigued me so much, and I. I started to to sing Halloween uh, songs and everything, and then I discovered Agent Steel. Hmm. I heard the Unstoppable John Force Series, album, and yeah. I was yeah, and uh, and that was just uh, it amazed me so much how how they sang, how they how they used their voice, and so I wanted that. Uh, so I, I started uh, also uh, taking lessons from um, an opera teacher, mm -hmm. uh, but. I, I, I'm not saying that he, he, there wasn't anything he could teach me because there was a lot of things he could teach me, but the yeah. things he would teach me didn't uh, fit into my uh, yeah, kind of you, singing. It yeah, wasn't what, that. It wasn't that I, I wanted. So, um, so I just had a few uh, lessons. So I'm pretty much self-taught. Yeah, but. Uh, uh, later on, I, I, I used another uh, sing, uh, uh, voice teacher. teacher, yeah, voice coach. Or, yeah, hmm. that wasn't what I wanted either. either. Yeah. So it was when I um, I moved back to to south of after being in, in Stockholm for years, I, I moved back here uh, to to Lyngdal in in Norway, and um, we had we had. Um, uh, we have a friend, uh, uh, um, a singer called uh, Raidun Sato. Mm -hmm. uh, she has been, uh, she's one of the voice coaches for uh, big opera singers and, and uh, well, not all the opera, but a lot of other uh, yeah. more famous. She yeah, was Joe. in uh, Stjernekamp. Uh, oh, yeah, like, yeah. There's oh, a, a yeah, yeah, yeah. Norwegian, <laughs> Norwegian uh, singing contest. Uh, yeah, yeah, she was in yeah. uh, Grand Prix and all. Uh, yeah, so um, she has, uh, she is educated at um, a vocal uh, academy down mm. in, I think it's Göteborg. Yes. Uh, and they, they use science in their, um, they, they analyze and use science instead of uh, how classical singing is that, mm. that you, uh, uh, well, well, she told me that uh, uh, she never warm up her voice. Hmm. Um, so I, I never warm up my voice. Uh, she uh, taught me how to, 
well, I didn't take lessons from her, she, but she's a friend, a longtime friend for many yeah. years. And she had a few courses, uh, singing courses down here in, in the set, two of them. So I, I attended and I sat back because we knew her and we just wanted to support her. Yep. And I was amazed because she, she had people singing in like five minutes, people who couldn't sing and she had them singing good, pretty good in, yeah. in five minutes. So I was uh, so intrigued by that. And so I asked her for a few tips and that really changed uh, my uh, ability to do things I never could do before hmm. uh, and reach, um, I mean, I, I, I smoked many years and I, uh, there was some pretty hard partying in, in Oslo with a bunch of um, other musicians. So yeah. that really took a toll on my voice. But, of course, um, yeah. So I stopped smoking and, and, uh, and she really, I can't do the, I, I can't sing uh, Red Sharks by Crimson Glory no more. <laughs> I could do that before, but I can't yeah. do it now. I can't take the, I can't uh, reach high, the highest notes, yeah, but, highest. I, but, I can, but I can, I can reach notes in between that I couldn't reach before. Oh yeah. So, uh, so that was a new uh, experience that's new for me. Yeah. Well, that's that's in- interesting, and, and I guess you know, for someone like you, who's mostly self-taught, it's it's a, it's a nice to finally find some some kind of voice uh, class or study or someone who you can relate to the way she's she's approaching vocals, right? Yeah, it's not. It's just uh, it's just simple math almost. It, it, mm. It's it's. Uh, she explained it so well too. Uh, so it's just uh, it's just uh, doing different sounds with your voice, and you know, in classical singing, that you don't uh, you don't color your voice. You you just want it to be yeah. yeah. kind of like that. But here you can do wow, yeah. so, uh, stuff like that, and that really really helped my uh, singing. If you are enjoying this interview, please head over to theprogspace.com for more reviews, articles, pictures and interviews all about progressive music. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. theprogspace.com You know, vocals is, is one thing, of course, that you're most known known for, but uh, and and that's how I know know most about you. But of course, in this album, you also play the guitar, and I believe you also play the guitar with some of of the other bands you've been with, like uh, Lunaris, right? And so so how mm, yeah. or Scariot maybe? Uh, but mm. uh, how how did you start playing the guitar, and and what is your sort of your background there? What's your inspirations there when it comes to that instrument? I started uh, playing guitar uh, when I started to sing because uh, I wanted to do. I wanted to. I wanted to um, write songs. I wanted to, to write songs like Testament and uh, Metallica or Loudness or uh, yeah. Uh, and the guitarist we had in that band, they they had other inspiration. Um, so we were we were uh, not on this, uh, I well different inspirations. Yeah. So I, I so they they wrote their style. So I wanted to write my style, and I, and I started also. I got intrigued by Ringo Monster and Vinnie Moore and Jason Becker and Marty Friedman. So I started yeah. st- not studying those, but as you know, ripping them off. And yeah, taking inspiration so, from them. Mm, mm, so uh, that's. Well, I never played guitar in a band, uh, but I, I wrote songs. I, I wrote not that much for Manitou, but I wrote for, uh, well, I had songs. I wrote for Spiral Architect. I wrote yeah. Uh, yeah. some of the, the riffs there. But uh, Scarlet was the first album I got to play guitar on. I, yeah. I play a few of the solos there. Uh, Lunaris album, I play bass. Uh, and finally, on Terra Odium, I, I get to to do what I always uh, dreamed of. It's a really, really big dream of mine to to uh, to play the to share the solos with with Bullet. Uh, yeah. 
huge dream for me. And I'm, I mean, I've been mean, practicing uh, up to eight hours a day, uh, years, uh, years and years and years. So you, you're ready for this. And I wanted to ask oh, that yeah. you, you because, because of course, uh, will, will you then, is, is then the goal for you to, to play the guitar and sing on, on, on stage? But, but then I, I have to stop myself because I, then I have to ask, are, are you planning to perform this, uh, songs live on stage? Is the, is the band planning to, to be, you know, a, a band that gigs and tours also? Uh, uh, the original idea with Tarodium was was it was uh, we were supposed to be a, a studio band and not tour because I wasn't interested in touring. I, I had it uh, well, not that I've been touring that much, but oh. I, I had music. I just wanted to sing and and not, none of the create, other things. Create new, yeah, yeah, being being creative and not repeating. 20 old yeah. songs alive that was kind of so i I, uh, I was in a state that i i really didn't want to do live shows or yeah. do cons uh, yeah, tours cool. or, yeah. so so tarot Odeon was supposed to be a, a studio band but i think uh i'm being so inspired by this band and uh mm. And I'm thinking of all these riffs, and and we are experimenting with with the guitar sound and everything, and and I, I, we really really want to take this uh, not on necessarily the a road, big tour, but, but yeah, but be able but to to, to uh, yeah. maybe a mini tour or on a stage at a festival, and uh, mm. that would be amazing. And uh, and I will not play guitar as I sing, but I will do all my solos live, and and uh, yeah. I think we'll be three guitars um, is the plan uh and and we need three guitars because there's a lot of uh parts, parts the album, in there yeah. that uh, yeah that that uh, well bully plays one thing and i play another thing mm. and and there's a rhythm guitar beneath that uh, so i think that could be cool too Mm. Yeah, I have to say, I, I I truly hope I'm 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 happy to hear you say that because I I truly hope you guys are able to do that because I would love to see this music p performed live and I'm guessing also you you mentioned about how the music has inspired you to to maybe do something with you know the live aspect of the band but I'm guessing also seeing all the people now all the fans that are so yeah. happy to to hear your music and and seeing these uh, faces in the audience must be something that. That would be a, a nice experience for you guys uh, if you manage to to get on on the stage with it. Absolutely, except that they probably know the lyrics ten times better than I do <laughs> because <laughs> I have my memory is shit. So that's always been my my. Uh, yeah. But um, but yeah, I, I would love to do uh, to to see the reactions uh, when we start the riffs and. Uh, and yeah. with also without I, I think uh, well we I'm hoping that we can have um, uh, a really really good sound life um, that that's also our goal to have uh, to be better not better than uh, the other, other ones but but have a really high class uh, sounding yeah. um, guitars yeah, and drums and everything yes yeah, so and I'm guessing having someone like John in the band would be a big benefit to that. I'm sure he also has uh, a lot of skills to make sure that you sound as good as possible on a stage as well. Yeah, and also Bulle with his uh, experience yeah, with, with the studio. So yeah. and Oscar has uh, his yeah, his it, studio. It's just a, so it's, I, I think. Uh, <laughs> but 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 I mean with guitar sound and everything. I mean like like like. Uh, King Diamond Conspiracy or TNT mm. uh, Intuition. I mean that those who have uh, gone uh, the extra mile to to get that real extra good yeah, sound, fantastic on a, sound on a yeah. I think mm. that, yeah, and I, I think you know, thinking about it, you can't really pick musicians out of the lineup of Terra Audium because everyone has so much experience. Everyone is so familiar with their mm. instruments, you know. Imagine someone like Steve, what he would bring to the live experience. You know, that's that's oh, a guy yeah. who's been mm. on the stage a few times. <laughs> so, mm. so uh, I'm guessing that could be yeah. something. It, it could be something quite unique for the audience to to see live. Mm. Uh, absolutely. Uh, regarding Steve, uh, if I don't, I don't know when 
things uh, open up again, and I'm assuming he would uh, he would tour with Testament and Death to All. Of course, of course. So, yeah. so what if 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 he has the time to? I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure that the Testament or a Death a gig would pay more than a Terodium gig. So, oh. but I mean, uh, that's not what he. Why he does it? That, that's exactly, not what I mean. Exactly, but, yeah. but, uh, but, and I, and I know that if he had a chance, he would love to perform with us. Yeah, uh, but he know, has a lot of commitments with the other. He has, yeah. uh, yes, and and he has a, a he has a job in Testament. Of course, so. of course. So I hope that we can. Uh, well, time will tell. Yeah, if we, if we get we get to play him alive, but uh, or else we, 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 I mean, we need to. Yeah, have, to to piece it together, yeah. figure it out how it. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm I'm guessing we need a bass player anyway. Yeah, because if we get three uh, live jobs, maybe he maybe can, he he, can do, yeah. he can do one, or maybe yeah. he not uh, available for any of them. Mm. So, so I'm, I'm guessing we need a live we need a live band. Yeah, I I, sure. I, I'm, I was thinking the same that that that's probably what will happen if you guys decide to do live gigs that you will have to have a a backup at least for for some of the musicians because it's it's yeah. it would be hard to put put everything together especially outside of you three Norwegian guys you know you Bolly and Oske mm. uh, yeah mm. I, I'm I'm just a, a, a live band and and take it as a bonus if yes if, if Steve if, has the time to yeah that would just be amazing. You know, I, I, I'm. I want to once again, you know, go a little back in history because I, I feel like um, fans out there will sort of strangle me if I had the opportunity to talk to you about this and and didn't. So, so I'm, I'm going to ask a little about. Uh, about your the previous um, bands and, and projects, of course, you were with Bolly mm. in Manitou in the early nineties, and then you were with mm. uh, Oskade uh, in Spiral Architect, which released you mm. know the legendary album Skeptics Universe in two thousand. Mm. Uh, both bands ended up releasing just one album. What what do you think that is? Well, Spiral Architect released two uh, Skeptics. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we know. <laughs> oh, I, was, I almost had a heart attack here, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, uh, well, uh, uh, Manitou, it was, uh, we were young, we were free, we're, we're young, but, um, and and we made an album uh, kind of like what we thought uh, when, when we planned the Terra Odeon album. We, yeah. we made an album with songs to be in a specific order and everything, but it, so there was uh, some of the what we thought were the best songs we had. We we wanted to save them for the next album. Oh really? Yeah. So and we had uh, we had quite much, well we had uh, quite a few songs ready and everything and uh, the band fell apart. Uh, some moved and uh, and life, and life happened. Yeah, yeah. So. That's why whenever it's only one uh, no, album, manager yeah. album, but I mean, we were, I think we were way better live than we were on uh, on the album. Mm. Uh, we were, I'm, I'm not saying we were famous for our live up, uh, live shows, but there were always the fans. Uh, it was always packed with people and it was really, really heavy and mm. And energetic uh, live uh, shows, uh, and I don't. I think the songs. I, I was hope. I hope that we could do more of that on the album, more of that energy. But I mean, uh, I like the album, but 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 it could have been. Uh, if you saw us live, you you would yeah. uh, understand what I mean. Yeah, I never. I never had the chance to to see the band live. You know the which which irks me a lot but uh, but I, I have to say entrance is for me sort of a classic of 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 mid 90s prog as well just because i guess you had that sound that even back then not a lot of of um other bands had and uh, but of course uh, the spiral architect album is sort mm. of much much more known than the the manitou album i'm, I'm guessing yeah, yeah. Uh, 
back in the day with Spurlock that we rehearsed maybe eight hours a day and uh, it was uh it was pretty intense uh especially before the album um but it was all fun i mean, I mean it was not like oh we're gonna rehearse it's not no. like that we, we we had fun and we look forward to it and we were creative in rehearsal and we 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 jammed and we um, played cover songs if we got mm. bored yeah, if you needed uh, I mean, a break yeah 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 so so we played some watchtower we played uh cynic we played uh fate's warning and we uh, we played weather report we had uh, a lot of fun uh and we we went to texas el paso to record the album, the album and yeah. um mm, and uh th- that too was an amazing experience uh it was uh it was just fantastic. Um, everything with Neil Kern there, all his stories about when he worked with uh, Queensryche or when he worked with Brand X or when he worked with Dokken and George Lynch and how they interacted or not interacted in the studio and everything that was cool. Yeah. It was so cool to listen to all his stories. I mean, he was the neighbor of Gene Simmons and uh, Robert Wagner. I mean, that was his neighbors. So that was, uh, I mean, oh, it was uh, so cool to uh, cool experience everything and being in, the stu- being in the studio, being in the US and El Paso yeah everything like that and uh, and we 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 were really really well rehearsed at the album we, uh, was supposed to be recorded live spa like yeah. the album we wanted to record it live um, but it we ended up not doing it live but uh, there are some improvisation and improvisation uh, yeah. and, uh, and on the album on it mm. uh, but so we did uh, started doing live shows and and we didn't have a budget. We didn't have. Uh, so uh, I think. I think our. Well, when we came to uh, to Atlanta to to play the prog rock, uh, uh, yeah, um, prog power, which was an, uh, that was an amazing opportunity for us, and and uh, one of the place that places that I really embellish I, I i can see it can still see the audience and everything there and uh, i really want to go back there and play but sound wise forever for us i mean i think it was in the third or maybe the last song uh, mm. the sound guy came up and said uh oh sorry uh, there's been something wrong with the pi so we ha- have only andreas guitars so your stainos guitar wasn't my Make mic'd up and oh, I see. So, uh, so he had only the rhythm guitar and and there was so much so we so we decided that uh, I don't we thought we, we can never do this live because that's without budget and everything so we decided nah we're not going to do no more uh, no more live, live jobs yeah because this is this is not inspirational it's no. the opposite when we can't uh, and I'm not putting the blame on anyone, or, or, or but it was the whole. I mean, extreme technical music. It, you you need a you need a sound guy that that uh, knows what he's doing. Yeah, knows the knows the band. Yeah, we should have had a sound guy five years prior to that. Exactly, uh, and we should have guitar techs and everything five years prior to that to the, everybody that it wasn't mas- like a machine, but. I mean, we we well rehearsed and everything, but we came out almost like a garage band, and mm. and uh, and that took took some of the joy out of playing live. Here. But playing Atlanta it was extremely for me. I, I just heard uh, the stage sound, so I saw, for me it was just fantastic. But I, I didn't hear that Stena no. didn't have the uh, what the, what so, the audience didn't hear. Mm, yeah, mm. yeah. And uh, also, that's when we met Steve. He was in the audience. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. So that's the first time we met, and we've hmm. we've been friends ever since. So, but yeah. that's uh, so. So when we uh, we started, uh, we have a lot of Spall Architect material. Uh, we have uh, 
recorded a bunch uh, in the, in the rehearsal uh, space and everything, yeah. but it's been a few years. We, yeah. we needed a few years to, uh, to recope. And, and now I, I see it as a, almost a horrifying to, to start rehearsing that hard to, to, uh, yeah, to get back to that level of, uh, yeah, because yeah. It, we can't, I mean, we can't do, um, we can't go back. We, we need to do, uh, we need to be on that level. Yeah. And, and every, and everybody in a band, well, at least the, the other ones in the band are in a extreme high level, even, losses I mean all the education and, and the playing he has and Oscar and Steina with, mm. with Satyricon he has the live experience and everything so, mm, so but uh, yeah, the, but, uh, the, it, the, it's, it's terrifying uh, thought to go back to, <laughs> to rehearsal go, yeah. space and start start to start uh, rehearsing eight Plugging hours a day a, almost yeah I, I have mm. to say, I, I wanted to ask because, you know, you, I, I seem to see Spiral Architect's name show up ever so often, you know, uh, mm. as, as the band never really made like a, a final statement that we, we are done, there will be no more music or anything like that. So so as a big mm. fan myself, uh, you know, I, I, I'm interested in hearing that there, there is more material, you know, that there is. Oh, yeah. There, yeah. Mm. And, and, and you guys actually were working or on a, a follow up to a Skeptics Universe, right? Oh, absolutely! Yeah, no, uh, we had, a, we have a, we, I think we have, we have almost whole songs. We oh, have, wow. um, but, but uh, we have a lot of material. We have ideas. We have just ideas for a song. How we want to make a song that has this and this, and mm. and we does this like uh, an idea for for a song. So, so if we just, uh, I mean. We spread around Norway now. We yeah. spread around the country, so it's not like back in the day when we lived, like almost. Yeah, of course, next to each we're other. We're not neighbors, yeah, yeah. but 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 yeah, well, we can do go to rehearsal room and yeah. start playing. It's not like that anymore. I mean, three of us actually live down here in in uh, it's um, in the south of Norway. Hmm. Both me, Oscar, and Lars lives down here. Yeah, and uh, and you have Steiner a few hours. Uh, north uh, or e- east? Yeah, east. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I think that. <laughs> well, no, so um, so it's not. Uh, but uh, and I not, don't want to say too much. No, I, I don't. Not, uh, yeah. I saw so a funny, so funny review of our album. Uh, there was uh, I can't remember the the country, but it was. Uh, these guys are from the band Spall Architect, who promise promise a new album every fancy year, but never <laughs> never deliver. I thought that was yeah. I think that was <laughs> well. It's, it's yeah. It's becoming uh, that Chinese uh, democracy or what it was called. You know the, the uh, Guns Roses, yeah. yeah. And it's and, and I'm sure it's nerve wracking. The thought of you know living up to that because this is an album like I, I feel like it's it's like Cynics Focus or whatever where new mm. people discover this album all the time and it mm. and it becomes like a, a mainstay in there for me at least. It's one of my top progressive metal albums ever and also oh, wow. like, also i mm. guess because it's so unique just like with a terra odium album it's it has a sound and an approach to music that you don't really hear anywhere else of oh. course you can hear the inspirations from let's say watchtower or whatever but it's totally it's unique uh, animal yeah well, we i think we uh, i i remember a lot of people say we well, we're just a ripoff of Watchtower, and, uh, but uh, I mean, if we are ripoff of anything, it's Watchtower and Cynic and Face Warning. Yeah. I mean, we we mix. I mean, like every band does, that we 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 take from from different bands, and 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 we uh, what was uh, exciting back in the, the the day is is Lars playing jazz fusion and his interest for that, and that's what the the kind of bass that I thrived for. I, I was yeah. really, uh, I, I wanted, I was interested in, in, in that really sound. Good. Yeah. And, and, and mixing that with, with heavy, more 
extreme heavy mm. metal or trash and that that was and and i i sing the way i i do i mean yeah that that's was your the voice. vocals that yeah. i i could could put on this so i i think we had a, a really special thing and and uh and when i joined the band uh the first song we did was um uh, cloud constructor yeah they uh, they had uh they started playing and said, uh, well, we did that and that, and this is the song. Da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. And I took the microphone and the lines I sing there are almost like the first improvisation on uh, in, in the rehearsal room. Yeah. It's pretty much how the song sounded when we played it well, the yeah, first what time. what came out, yeah. Mm, and they had, uh, and they had um, yeah, we had a song which we threw away, uh, and that was the start of spinning. Mm. And I said, "Wow, whoa, you can throw away that. Oh, you like it? Yeah." And when we started, and it turned out to be spinning. Uh, so uh, it was. Uh, well, thank you for keeping that in because it's uh, a ma- amazing. <laughs> well, fact. well, it's it's, yeah. it's not just me, but but, no, but, but yeah, we started the, thinking. We started thinking more like a band that's because the way they you didn't were working. know. Yeah, they were playing just instrumentals and and didn't know. Uh, they didn't have a singer ah, yeah. and what, was good and, with and what to do with it. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Oh. Okay, can you sing on this? And yeah, let's try. And uh, so. I think that what we're talking about now, about you said that you occasionally at least have heard some people say that you're that spiral arch- architect were a ripoff of Watchtower or whatever. Mm. I think it's a very weird criticism of any music because nothing appears out of nowhere. Even if you talk to like legendary musicians like the guys making up Beatles or Stones or Rush or whatever, they would tell you that they were inspired by this or that. Oh. And so so it's a very weird criticism to make to make of a band. And of course there <laughs> There's a lot of parts, you know, of Spiral Architect, especially the extended fusion elements that is not so prevalent with Watchtower, at least uh, mm. the, the early Watchtower stuff. So I don't think that's that's a valid criticism. But then again, I'm I'm a big fan. So well, well thank you. But 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 also, if you if you know the music like we do, I mean, yeah. if you're if you're outside uh, uh, outside of the band and and. Watchtower is the band you've heard. I mean, it come, uh, almost like, um, uh, um, yeah, I remember a critique from uh, from uh, when we re- released the Manu, Manitou album. Was, yeah. was, they said we were a ripoff of Iron Maiden. And, uh, yeah. and okay, we have we is, well, harmonized the guitars and everything, but... Ah, uh, we were very inspired by Maiden, and we took stuff from Iron Maiden. But uh, I mean, it's but I mean, uh, Watchtower is just an honor to be uh, to be mentioned in the same uh, sentence by uh, with them. Yeah. But, but I, I think we were we had the jazz elements; they were more thrash metal, more extreme, and we we brought in the the Fates Warning or the Halloween yeah, the, the or the Psychotic Waltz. Or, yeah. yeah mm, so. Yeah. But very big inspiration, uh, by all means. Yeah, but I guess, once again, you touched on something important there, because, of course, you're going to compare it to what you know, and, and I guess that's why mm. so many bands get compared to Dream Theater or Opeth. Like, mm. if, if all you eat yeah. is hamburgers, everything else is going to be compared to hamburgers, right? So, Absolutely. So I'm, yeah, so I'm mm. guessing that that's part of it. But, well, mm. uh, you know, coming up on a, an hour of us talking here, which I've, I've really, yeah. really enjoyed, but... Uh, I, I want to ask, you know, finally then, what are the uh, future plans for Terra Audium? Are you already writing new material? What are you doing a release party? What you have any things coming up? N- not, uh, uh, not right now. We we're not uh, having anything planned ex- except for we have musicians uh, rehearsing um, for a live band. Yeah. Uh, um, and, and uh, well, songs, yeah, we have a bunch of them. I mean, we had uh, we had a third album ready before we released the debut album, almost. Oh, really? Yeah. So you're being very yeah, really prolific uh, in the writing now. Then, B- B- Bully, Bully is an ex. He's a lean, lean, uh, lean, mean riff machine. I mean, he's uh, he's he's. Uh, I think. I'm not kidding. I think he has 30 songs. Oh, really? Yeah. Or something like that. And I haven't, uh, I have 
done vocals uh, on maybe ten of them. I uh, I have not not have the ah. time to to do no, so. To there's do, a lot of music. That's uh, sort lot of almost of music. an album album words of music with with Bolly and you ready all, all already then. Yeah, yeah, almost two albums ready. Ah, wow. Well. I'm I'm very happy to hear that because you know I I loved uh, uh, Ne Plus Ultra and mm. of course focus is on that now everybody should go listen to it it's it's an amazing album but it's good also well, to you. hear that uh, there are more stuff coming from you guys so so mm. well thank you so much uh, even for being on the prog talks with me uh everyone who's watching and listening you should of course check out terra audium you know follow their social medias there will be links in the description check out uh, ne plus ultra you can listen on all major streaming services or even better you know you can buy the album from frontiers and support the guys that's that's even better you know <laughs> And check out the website, uh, terraaudium.com, for news and information. Uh, all of that is there. Thank you so much, Ivan, uh, for being on with me. Oh, th thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> and as always, thanks to you watching or listening uh, to the show. Uh, please like and subscribe. It helps us out a lot. Until next time, stay safe and keep spreading that prog love. The Prog Talks. Produced by the Prog Space. Main host, Rune Belsvik Reynos. Produced by Rune Belsvik Reynos, Vanessa and Matthias Kirsch. All graphics and animations by Vanessa Kirsch. Intro theme by Giuseppe Negri. Outro theme by Zach Munovitz. This was the Prog Talks by the Prog Space. See you in a week.